Okay, welcome to the Sunday Shop Update. All this weekend is going to be about HR. So we've just arrived at Stocktonbury Gardens. This is where our show for HR is going to be this year. And we're just busily setting up. It starts tomorrow. I'll give you a look around. Tithe Barn, which is really nice with lovely old building with teas and coffees and fresh food. Really nice. This is where you can get your fresh teas and coffees. I'll be in here all week, I think, eating the cakes and drinking the coffee. It's a beautiful building. Look at the woodwork here. Unbelievable. Beautiful old building. And then the side of press in here. There's other artists for HR, which is on the 9th to the 16th. So we've got some boards in the side of press. And got got another clock. Yeah, um, oh. yeah, yeah. We've got this wonderful apple orchard. Four acres of beautiful gardens through here. And then here's our little room with the HR. Uh, this is my stand behind. We're setting up here. So it's quite nice to see all these tables together. You can see a bit of a theme here with my leg design, which I've been working on. Some of the legs, as you know, sit on the end of the table. This has worked really well. And this table, which I built a while ago, is a kind of test to see how this joint is really good and come together perfectly. It seemed to expand fine in the winter. And then you've got the bigger one sitting underneath. The new table, which you're gonna see the video this weekend. And then the steam vent with the controversial protruding top and some of my clocks. So I've got some of the wine holders, candle stuff, resin boards, my little speciality, some boards with knives in, iPad or gadget stands, resin again. Quite a nice little selection there. So hopefully it's gonna be a good place to meet other artists and just to show people in the area what I do. A lot of my work is actually custom, so this is kind of examples really and gives people ideas, um, they can order what they want. So this is going to be incredibly labour intensive and time consuming, but I thought it was time to clear out my wood rack bench, it's just getting silly. Uh, and a neighbour, which I'll show you in a moment, has kindly, uh, her husband passed away years ago, before I knew her, he was a woodworker, and she's given me lots of his offcuts from cabinet making. This is a little find from my neighbour's basement. She's moving and this, her husband, like I said, was a joiner and this is some of his scraps. Gonna make some boards and all sorts of stuff out of this. Most of it's oak, some interesting bits. So I'm gonna be collecting and storing those as well. So I thought it was time to sort out my own uh, scraps pile. Okay, so quite a few days this week, I'm in the shop going through my scrap piles and making chopping boards. Now there's nothing particularly glamorous about making chopping boards. Pretty much easily make them with most machinery. I'm sure I'm gonna get loads of comments. Why am I using all these big machines to make chopping boards? Well, it's a very simple answer and that is it's a local uh, show here. And I'm actually looking forward to trying to meet other people in my, my new community. I've been living here a year, uh, other art and crafts people. And chopping boards is actually a really good way at these shows. They're quite inexpensive for people to buy. And oddly, there's quite good profit in them because if you imagine I can make 20 boards in a day and some of the boards with the resin um, and the hard exotic woods are selling between 50 and 80 pounds, that's quite a good income. So that's to answer that question before I get asked, that's the reason I'm doing chopping boards. I also have an amazing amount of waste wood, things like this and this, um, and it's actually a brilliant way of using it up. I have all kinds of scraps. I have, I'm going to be making an end grain out of here. So I'm going to run this through the planer and then chop this up and mix this around a little bit like you'd make a chess board. That's for an end grain board. And then some off cuts from a worktop. This is actually a worktop that I made and then I realized it's probably not worth making worktops. You might as well just buy them because this took for ages and they're so cheap to buy now. 
So I quite like to do, this is just a simple board that I've put together like a kind of butcher's block style. And what I like to do is just rebate a stripe. You can just use some of this uh, wax here for blocking the ends. Another nice way to use up small scraps is the end grain boards. They're really interesting. So this is some of the stock for this weekend, coming weekend. Just putting some of the chestnut food safe oil on there. It's quite a lot of different styles here. Most of them incorporating uh, walnut. Some of them are actually oyster slab cuts. Some have walnut and resin. It's a really nice one there. The white resin, which looks really good with walnut and oak. It's really nice. These little off cuts, these little slices from the end of a branch. They're really cool. And then some of them can have candles or little pots for dishes and stuff, ramekins. And ones like this where you can drop a cheese knife in. So I'm just going to let those soak for a while, give them a few coats of food safe oil. And then box that lot up to get it off. Yeah, so if the weather holds like we've got now, what a beautiful location. So that's the end of the Sunday shop update. I hope you've enjoyed seeing, making all these boards and bits for the show. Should be a good place to meet other artists and just meet some people in the area really, show them what I do. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.